Stephen II ruled from around 1030 to around 1058. We noticed a few significant changes during his reign, most notably the change in title. It changes from Rex Croatorum, King of the Croats, to Rex Croatia et Dalmatia, King of Croatia and Dalmatia, designating his rule over a territory rather than his subjects. Tying the title to the land is a signal of a more formal adoption of what we would call feudalism. Around the same time we get the first firm evidence indicating that the kings were in effect giving out land to the nobility under them, de jure for them to administer in the name of the king, de facto with time and course of events, they would keep it. This eventually leads to the strengthening of the nobility. The kings had probably been giving out land to their nobles for a long time before this, it's just that we didn't have any evidence of that beforehand. Now we do with the 10th and 12th centuries bringing a flood of legal documents of all sorts all over Europe as a new legalistic culture appears. Stephen II was succeeded by his son Peter Kreshimir IV. Interestingly enough, Peter Kreshimir was around the same time investigated by the Pope for the alleged murder of his brother, Goislav. He was freed of all charges after twelve nobles swore to his innocence. Along with the usual practices of donations to the church and the ongoing conflict with Venice over the coastline, we also see Peter Kreshemir expand the kingdom's influence to its greatest extent, aiding Slavic nobles in conflicts with Byzantium to the east and using Byzantium's weakness to also take firmer hold of the coastal cities in the 1060s. This weakness of Byzantium was caused by ongoing attacks to the east by Seljuk Turks. This weakness was perhaps the most opportune time for a takeover of the cities, but it broke the centuries-long bond that connected the Turpimirovic dynasty with Byzantium. All this caused the king of Croatia to try to find a possible ally, protector or guarantor of legitimacy in the papacy, but that does not appear to have gone over too well. The papacy was at the time undergoing the 11th century church reform, which along with other things wanted to institute the papacy as superior to the temporal rulers. That naturally sparked conflict. In line with some of the reforms, church councils were held in split, debating decisions of the Lateran Council of 1059, and more specifically to the area, debating again the question of Slavic mass and Gogolic writing practice, which was condemned by the council. Again, back to the coastal cities. Quite a few of them didn't appreciate the liberties that Peter Kreshemir IV was taking. So in 1074, they called for help. Help came from a Norman noble of southern Italy, who was either contracted by the cities themselves for help, or the Pope or the Byzantine Emperor requested help to free his de jure lands. We're not sure. Amico II de Giovinazzo, who was in need of land and funds after his less than successful conflicts with Robert de Guiscard, answered the call. Amico captured Peter Kreshemir IV on the island of Pag and imprisoned him. The cities were freed of one overlord only to bow to another. They all soon again fell in line and swore loyalty to the Doge of Venice, who was still nominally a Byzantine vassal. Peter Kreshemir IV presumably died in imprisonment in 1075. He was succeeded by his relative, Mitar Zvonimir.